Everyone imagines ships as massive solid lumps of steel that slowly plod around the world, but the reality is somewhat different. They're actually flexible and can bend and move depending both on how they're loaded and the motion of the ocean. In technical terms it's known as hogging and sagging, which is really just an engineering description of the shape of a deformed structure which occurs when a load is applied. Let's look at this beam. When you support it from its ends it's easy to imagine the middle sagging down a little. With sagging, the top face of the beam is under compression and the bottom face is under tension. Switch it around of course, maybe by moving the supports to the middle and now the top of the beam is under tension and the bottom is under compression. We call this hogging and you can easily remember it if you think about the shape of a hog's back. It's arched up higher in the middle than it is at either end. When it comes to ships, the exact same principles apply. They either hog or sag depending on how they're supported, with the structural members of the deck and the keel designed to resist both compressive and tensile forces. Unlike the beam however, ships are supported by buoyancy rather than fixed supports along their length. This means that the amount of support actually varies depending on the shape of the hull. At the bow for example, the finer lines mean that there is a lesser volume of water displaced, generating less buoyancy. In the middle, the hull is boxier, displacing more water and generating more buoyancy. When designing a ship you need to compensate for this by ensuring that the weights in the hull are distributed to match the distribution of buoyancy. Of course, it's all very well designing a ship to avoid hogging and sagging when empty, but what about when we load cargo? After all, an empty ship is rather pointless, at least from a commercial perspective. Obviously, if you load all the cargo in the middle, you're going to have a saggy ship, and if you load it all at the ends, you'll have a hoggy ship. If you distribute it evenly across the entire length, you'll actually also end up with a slight hog, due to the greater amount of buoyancy generated by the shape of the hull in the centre. So instead, we actually plan the load using a computer programmed by the ship's designers, which takes into account the strength of the structural components of the hull, and the buoyancy distribution of the hull at different drafts. There will always be some flex in the hull of course, so every ship will have its own normal condition. For example, on lots of container ships, it is usual for them to be hogged when in the loaded condition, due to the additional buoyancy generated by the centre of the vessel. As I say though, it doesn't really matter as long as you keep the vessel within limits, according to its own structure. The chief officer will therefore plan the load using the loading computer, so that the hull stays within limits at all times, of course with the captain giving final approval. Oh, on that note, don't forget to check out The Little Captain, available from the Casual Navigation Store. I designed him as an ideal companion to sit on a chart table, by the windows on the bridge of a ship, or even your desk at home. Whether you buy him for yourself, a friend, or a loved one, he just provides a subtle reminder of a passion for the sea, no matter where you happen to be. Check out the link in the description to order yours today. Anyway, once a ship is loaded, you can easily work out whether it's hogging or sagging by checking the draft marks. This is why there are three sets, one at each end and one in the middle. The difference between the forward and aft marks tells you the ship's trim, and the difference between the middle mark and the fore and aft average tells you whether you're hogging or sagging. If your drafts match with the predictions from the loading computer, it's a good sign that the cargo is all loaded according to plan. But we've missed something critical. So far, we've assumed that the buoyancy generated by the hull is consistent, in other words, the water is flat. In reality, once a ship leaves port and starts to encounter waves, things change completely. The extreme example is when the wavelength approaches the length of the hull, so that you have either a trough or a crest at both the bow and stern at the same time. Suddenly, the waves act in the same way as the supports on the beam that we discussed earlier. With a crest at each end, the hull will tend to sag in the middle, and with a crest in the middle, the hull will hog. This sort of hogging and sagging is inevitable for every ship, no matter how she's been loaded, so it's pretty much out of our control. Instead, ships are designed with the strength to be able to cope with anything that we can reasonably expect the sea to throw at them. What they can't cope with however is, for example, a hogging force created by the waves acting on a ship that is already severely hogged by its cargo. When this happens, it can lead to a ship literally snapping in half. A few years ago I made a video about the MSC Napoli. She was overloaded with containers that were in many cases vastly over the weight that had been declared. This meant that she left port already exceeding her safe structural limits, so when she later encountered heavy weather in the English Channel, the hull snapped in half. Ships are designed to naturally flex with the motion of the ocean, but as with everything, there will come a point when the flexing just gets too much. 
In the same way as piling too much weight in the middle of a beam will lead to it breaking, if you load a ship so that it bends, when she later hits heavy weather, she too will snap in half. The Napoli is a classic example, so I highly recommend you go and check out that video next, and don't forget also to check out The Little Captain, available from the Casual Navigation Store.